welcome to Delightful! This is part 2 of the Your First Repaint tutorial. Make sure to check part 1 for info on types of dolls and how to prep her for the repaint. Let's resume. Step 1. Begin by dusting pastels on the cheeks, lips, eyeshadow area, and a little on the nose. Real skin has all sorts of color fluctuations, so blushing the doll can really breathe life into the plastic. I'm using a combination of rusty brown, peaches, and reds to get my desired color of blush for Cleo. If you do it too heavy-handed, just take it off with your needle eraser and try again. I also use the eraser to shape the shape of the blush around the nose and lips. One technique I've found useful is to use my cotton glove to rub in and dissipate the color if it's too strong or not even. I spend a fair amount of time on this step, working the blush intensity back and forth until it's just right. Before I move on, I clean up any stray pastel chalks with a kneaded eraser. Here she is blushed! Although I don't show it, I'm going to spray her again to set the blush in place. I don't want to have to patch it later if I mess up. Step 2. Time to start forming the eyes. Taking a color similar to the skin tone, I pre-sketch the shape of the eyes and the eyelids. Although real people don't want to have lots of eyelid wrinkles, it's a popular choice by doll artists to add lots of lines above the lash line. Something about it just looks good on dolls. While I'm drawing, I'm also keeping in mind the lower water lid. Adding this detail sets your face up apart from beginners, who might only draw a flat anime-like eye instead. Step 3. Don't forget the lips. Following the sculpt, I darken the corners and lip line with a crimson pencil, as well as add some vertical lines on the lips to imitate wrinkles. Step 4. This is probably the most important step, getting your doll to look the direction you want. For this tutorial, I'll be doing forward and slightly upturned eyes, like she'll be looking up at me from my desk. Where and how you want the eyes to look is completely up to you, but keep in mind these few pointers. The more whites of the eyes that show, the more awake or crazy the expression looks. Where the iris touches the top and bottom lids, and how much of the iris is covered by the lid will also determine awakeness or craziness. Lastly, pupil size greatly influences the expression of the doll as well. Large pupils are considered cuter, like a puppy, and smaller pupils make the expression excited and awake, or again, crazy. Here's a tip. For forward-looking dolls, pull the pupils closer towards the inner eye. Keep in mind both eyes at the same time, not individually while you sketch them in. A common mistake I see are wall-eyed dolls, because getting your doll's expression to look focused can be a challenge. Step 5. Once you're satisfied with the sketch, it's time to block in some color. Keep in mind the shadow cast by the eyelid and shade accordingly. I add whites to the eyes and use dark green to add depth around the irises and in the pupil before putting a brighter green on top. Step 6. Alright, she's looking pretty good, but something seems odd. That's right, she's in desperate need of some eyebrows. For me, eyebrows are my arch nemeses, and I have a tough time getting them even. To start, I dot on some pastel where I want the eyebrow to start. I'm measuring the distance from the center and whether or not they both align with the corner of the eye below it.
I also use my kneaded eraser to shape the edges of the eyebrow. Step 7. Now that we've basically got everything in place, we can start darkening our lines and adding more color. Using a dark brown, I am drawing over my initial sketch but not completely covering it. I like the way that red tone comes through. Here I'm adding pink to the tear duct and waterline and building up the whites of the eyes. Keep in mind the whites of the eyes should be in the shadow of the eyelid as well. You can see here I'm adding some gray blue to this area. If you make the entire whites of the eyes stark white, it will flatten the image and look less realistic. While I'm darkening the other colors, now seems like a good time to go in with a sharp pencil and sketch the hairs in the eyebrows. And don't forget those lips. Sometimes I neglect the lips. <laughs> Step 8. Now let's add those eyelashes. Similar to the way I approach the eyes, I'm going to sketch the lashes in with a lighter color than I intend to end with. Using a dark brown, I pull up and away from the lid in short, sweeping motions. If some of the lashes look too crazy, erase them down and try again. Think of lashes as thin, elongated triangles, thicker at the base and delicate at the tip. I sketch them a bit unevenly on purpose for a more natural look. When it comes to lower lashes, I found drawing little overlapping V shapes to look both fluffy and natural, and works nicely on such a small scale. I'm right-handed, so lashes on the other side of the face can be difficult for me to draw. Sometimes I flip the doll upside down to get the right angle I need, or prop my hand up on a book or something. Anything it takes, right? Step 9. You're almost done! It's time to sharpen the details and add more color. I accent the tear duct a little more, add some dark blush to the corners of the eyes, build up the iris color a little more, anything you feel is lacking, tighten it up. And at last, I go in with black. I save black for the very end because it's a strong color and can easily take over your face. I hesitantly add black to the base of the eyelashes and a little in the pupil. Step 10. Time for the finishing touches. I like to add micro glitter to the iris to give the eyes a magical effect. I paint on a touch of water first, then press on the glitter. If you're familiar with Photoshop, this is like the dodge tool of real life. <laughs> Shiny! One of my favorite finishing touches to add is white lines. Kind of like with makeup, you're highlighting parts of the doll's face. Using a light cream color, I'm adding lines below the end of the eyebrow, at the edge of her eyelid, as well as under the tear duct, a little on the cupid's bow of her lips, as well as some of the other eyelid wrinkles. I don't know what it is about this step, but it really pulls the whole thing together. And of course, let's not forget the highlight. This is the fun part because it's really easy but adds a lot of life to the eyes. Smaller dots look more realistic, and bigger shines look more cartoony. I also decided last minute that I wanted her to have some freckles. Like I said, finishing touches, add whatever you want. Awesome, you're done with her face! Well, basically, we're going to seal her one last time. Then, using Liquitex high gloss varnish, I'm going to add some shine. Water down the varnish just a little bit and wait a solid two hours between coats. I do about two to three coats. Some people cover the whole eyes and lips. I usually just coat the pupils and lips, but in this case, I'm feeling the tear duct and lips. Congratulations! You made your first repaint! Now all that's left is the hair and the outfit for your doll to be completely customized.
I hope you found this video helpful if you're new to the hobby. If you did, give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe for more customs! Also, I would love to see how your dolls turn out. If you'd like, find me at Delightfully on Instagram and tag me so I can see! Thanks for joining me and have fun getting creative and customizing your toys! I'll see you in the next video! Stay artsy! Annyeong! I see you. Hey, you can't be out here. I gotta spray my doll.